and we're back. Uh, now this segment is going to be all about uh, sci-fi movies we hate and also our gift of pleasures. Which, by the way, yes, this is going to become a regular thing with certain subjects that uh, we will go into our guilty pleasures, the ones that are, we know is bad, but we still enjoy yeah. it. Movies like Independence Day. Uh, or Space Jaws. I already apologize for that. <laughs> We're going to rag on you about that now. Yeah, take off a whole episode. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I don't really know any movies that are guilty pleasures. Movies that you know is bad, but you like, just like it, or you just can't think of it. I, I really can't think of any, because, you know, most stuff I've watched. You think you... Yeah. At least in your opinion, is good. Yeah. Okay. Um, about games or anything? You know, we can go for either one. You know, just bad stuff or get quite well, well, I mean, like, think of. Like you know, like you said, like uh, when you talk about Metroid, you know, <laughs> like uh, like Metroid, for example, you know, there's not really a story; it's just a game. But you know. Well, that was back when story wasn't. Yeah, like required. when games never. That story. Yeah, the only game I could think of that had any somewhat any story really was um, Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. Uh, which well, is the first game I ever well, played. I can like talk about like you know later on like more in the modern time. Uh, Nintendo never really bothers with stories or consistency with characters most of the time. Yeah, well, it's a video game company. Yeah. And they're not really concerned about you know continuity and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just we need to get with the time though. Yeah. Uh, the, so you really can't think of anything you can really say is guilty pleasure or bad in anything? Well, like, if it's bad, I never really give it a chance. I just, okay. like, get, like, one episode because someone recommends it, and I'm like, I can't get into this. And it's like, not. If you're not immediately into a movie, you will just... Yeah, I mean, because, you know, I watch my stuff for, you know, free. free. So, you know, my time gets invested in other things. Uh, well, I got like a whole thing in my head right now of like guilty pleasures and bad movies and stuff like that, but I'll give it to Aaron. So. Well, I guess if I was going to have to say guilty pleasure that's science fiction, uh, Jason 10. Hmm? Jason 10, the Friday the 13th, 10. Oh my god. Uh, that yes. movie, it, it's science fiction. It's it counts. You know, it, it, it's so bad and cheesy and corny, and it's all about sex and everything else. But I mean, I just couldn't help it. I watched it and I laughed the whole thing. I'm like, this is funny. Plus, you, know, you had the whole play on the Andromeda characters. Andromeda was a huge thing at that time. The show that he come out, and, you know. Well, and of course, at this point, though, nobody was taking this movie seriously. No, nah. you know. But you had, as I said, it was it was meant to just be. Kind of kooky, crazy, stupid, but you know. So yeah, it was almost like by design, it was stupid. Yeah, and so I mean, I enjoyed it a lot, you know, and so I guess that would be a guilty pleasure because I know it's so bad, but still I can't help but like it. Um, as far as you know, things I hate, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna say I hate this because I really do, but I, a lot of shows like Andromeda and things like that, I just could not really get into. It's not that I didn't like them; it's just. They didn't have the same quality to me that Star Wars or Star Trek had. Uh, of like with me and Stargate. I've never been a big fan of Stargate. I've always thought the concept was stupid. Right? Yeah, you know, so these things aren't things I hated. They're just a lot of those shows I couldn't get into. Yeah. Now, shows I hated was Battlestar Galactic. And I know I'm going to get ragged on a lot by people for that because it's like uh, there's a whole legion of people that love it. I just hate it. It's boring as hell to me. I don't care if you're talking about the old Battlestar Galactica, the new Battlestar Galactica, the movies of Battlestar Galactica. I hate them. They're boring. It's like just, oh. Like, is it hate or just like indifferent? Oh, yeah. It's like, like, You don't even want to look I, anything at yeah, it. I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I indifferent stuff at most, but I never really hate, you know, like Firefly. I never really. I never really got bad. into it. I just watched a few episodes of it. I'm like, it's, it's okay. Well, it's okay. I love Firefly. Okay, keep in mind, I what saw Firefly long before I watched Outlaw Star. So, if you watch Outlaw Star, you realize Firefly is Outlaw Star. I guess in some ways that could be kind of a guilty pleasure of mine because I know when I'm talking about Firefly in the past, you're like, Firefly. Do you like Firefly? I'm like, yeah. What of it? What makes it? You know, it just goes to that area then. 
you know, um, so I guess that could be considered a guilty pleasure for me. Fire Alliance Serenity. We're talking about the one that got canceled on Fox. Yes, right? and the yeah, one that came with Serenity. You know, like Jane, made a huge you know, deal about. Yes. Right. I never got into Heroes. I don't know if that's sci-fi or not, but I just never. It's, it's more like a, super. It's more superhuman. Oh, okay. Story. I just never get into that show either. But um, I'm already I'm So, not a lot of movies, but you have a few few shows you dislike. Yeah, that you know, sci-fi. Uh, well, mainly, you know, again, V is another thing I never really got into. My brother. The, oh, the, the old, the old V. Yeah, the old man. Yeah, you know, I again, it's something I have against. It. I don't hate it. I, if I actually had like a lot of free time that I didn't care what the fuck I was doing, I would just sit down and probably watch the entire thing. My brother has all this. He was a nut about it. Of course, probably my uh, disinterest could be because he used to torture me as a child with his bee doll. He would, look at the doll, look at the doll, rip off the mask, it's a lizard, it's gonna get you. <laughs> that, that's how that went. But, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Now with me, with Guilty Pleasures, I have tons of them. Not a whole lot of sci-fi, but, um, I don't know, Duck Dodgers, does that count? <laughs> Duck Dodgers. Duck Dodgers, in the 21st century. Uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> yeah. I did not see like, that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that one coming either. I just thought it was like Green Guy. Uh, um, I see as with sci-fi, not a whole lot of sci-fi movies I hate or or, or you know get the pleasures for me. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I would say Independence Day would probably be a guilty pleasure for me because it's just like Will Smith punching the alien. How do you not be? How are you not entertained by that? This is from Men in Black. Yeah. Uh, the only dif- only difference is Men in Black is legitimately good. Yeah. 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 But the Independence Day is just so cheesy. Just it's basically a remake of Earth versus Earth versus the Flying Saucers. It's so cheesy, but I, I absolutely love it. And that uh, does go into another category for me: the old '50s sci-fi movies. That you know, sci-fi was the thing, space travel, and all that. It was the fifties, um, and people weren't being people weren't scared by Dracula anymore. So everything was radioactive. Everything was nuclear. Radioactive vampire. Yeah. Yeah. Atomic age vampire. Three, four, seven. It's a real movie. It's actually not about what you think it's about. But oh, okay. For title sakes. I was picturing Dracula in a you know like biohazard suit. I was thinking of like glowing. Um, no, it's, it's actually way boring than it sounds. What's up? The bioreactive bio has an out of you. Uh, the radioactive vampire is actually about a woman who's like disfigured and she's like an emotional vampire or something. And this is in the fifth. This is a long before to while. Uh, but anyway, the, you have... We have movies like The Robot Monster. What is The Robot Monster? It's just a guy in a gorilla costume with a fishbowl on his head walking around in apparently all human life has been eradicated except for six people. The cast of this movie is only seven people, by the way. Um, and basically, it's all the monster does. All the robot monster does. All the robot monster does in this movie is walk around, carry people, and just that's it. And he has his bubble machine. It's okay. And he has his bubble machine. What? His bubble machine. I forget what it does. But you see bubbles all over this movie. I don't know what's up with that. Oh, and of course, you see him... And of course you see him trapped in front of Bronson's cave every... 15 minutes. If you don't know what Bronson's Cave is, it's basically a spot in Hollywood that has been in almost every single movie since the 40s. Um, hell, even episodes of Power Rangers was filmed in front of this place. How episodes of Star Trek has been filmed in this area. Um, what Tons and tons of westerns, even The Searchers was filmed in this area. Oh, I think I know what place you're talking about. It's just this cave, even the Bat Cave. That's where the Bat Cave is supposed to be. Like, whenever you see the Batmobile drive out of the cave, mm-hmm. it's Bronson's cave. And I'm talking about the old 60s. Yeah. 
Uh, then you have, you know, it from beyond the space and uh, the fly. It, it, keep in mind, when it's, no, I should say Return of the Fly. Because the original fly is actually a really good movie. It's like a really good classic. It's got Vincent Price on it. No, this does not have Vincent Price on it. The sequel does. Oh, the sequel does. Okay. The, you know, this one's in color. It's subtle. You don't even see... You don't even see the fly head until uh, the end of the movie. It's not like the sequel where it's black and white and um, half the time it says a guy in a fly costume trotting around the woods. That's the cheesy one everybody thinks of. Okay. Hmm. Um, the original is a legit classic. Um, you know, in co- it, it being in color doesn't make it a classic. I'm just saying that it's in color in the 50s. How often do like B movie, B movies and monster movies get turned into get being colored in the fifties? Not a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Usually the high budget blockbuster movie. You know, this is before the notion of blockbuster, but you know the big major releases like the Searchers and stuff like that. Movies like the Searchers would be in color, but not Fly. You no, know, I I'm just surprised that the Fly was in color. This is a little thing I just did not expect. But again, clever writing, great acting. It's a really legitimate good movie. But the fly, the return of the fly, is can't be fun. It's stupid. The acting's horrendous. Vincent Price is mugging his ass off like he usually does. And keep in mind, I love me some Vincent Price. Vincent Price is awesome in whatever movie he's in. The Tingler, The Raven, The Terror, which was filmed in two days, my, um, my dad. Also stars Jack Nicholson in Boris Karloff. But anyway, so many, so many bad, hilarious sci-fi movies from the 50s. Either aliens were coming to us or we were going to them or things were being turned into giant monsters through radioactive radioactivity. Why well, mine from outer space. Yeah. Which they, is only the greatest is only the greatest science fiction movie of all time. <laughs> but yeah, Planet Nine from Outer Space, all the Ed Wood movies are mm-hmm. awesome. They're terrible but they're so awesome. They're so bad that it actually makes them good. Yeah, uh, now there's not a whole lot of modern stuff. I mean I did get a kick out of Space Jaws. It's just because I can't believe movies this bad still exist. Now, I did just think of something. Sorry to interrupt you, on your space it's, it's, thing, it's but right. we don't need to I'm, I'm done anyway. <laughs> but I just thought of something, you know, I just thought of this a minute ago, you know, I've never actually seen this movie. My brothers did, they told me the plot of the movie, and the plot is what, this will fall into my guilt and pleasure, because I love the plot idea, and I think it was called Forbidden Planet or Forbidden World. I think it was Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet, yeah, okay. And it was basically about, the, you know, this planet area where these people live in this dome. Uh, are we talking, like... Robbie the Robot? No. Oh, man. Basically, I think this movie came out in the 70s or 80s. It was a low budget movie. Sure? Yes. We're, there are two different. You're probably thinking of a completely different movie. No. I, that robot was like in this thousands not, of movies at around This that is time. not a robot movie. There's no robot. No movie. robots. Alright. The plot, the thing in the movie is there are these giant, kind of apish monsters on this planet that end up kidnapping women, rape them, impregnate them with these little versions of themselves, and then when the thing's going to be born, it bursts out of the woman's stomach and kills them. And the, alien. the concept of that whole thing, it just, it fascinates me because it plays on women's fear. And that's why I liked it. I was like, this is a good horror movie. It's a horrible movie. But the concept of that, playing on that type of primal fear, fear of rape, and then of uh, having something you know, exploding that you can't control, it was a very compelling idea. You know, it's something that um, I think could be an awesome movie. Two nowadays. movies I forgot to mention. I'm just going to throw them out now because mm-hmm. I forgot to mention them. The two science fiction movies that I think are really damn good, and I think some people forget about them. Like I did, I forgot about them. But The Time Machine yep. and Planet of the Apes. Yes. Two awesome movies. You know, and again, both movies have had remakes done in them. Yeah. You know, I watched the Time Machine remake, and actually, I loved the Time Machine remake. It was, I thought it was a really uh, As good far movie. as remakes go, it was passable. It, I think the original is far superior, but that's, you know, that's me. You know, I've, I've actually, I've seen bits and pieces of the original, I've never seen the full thing, so I don't have anything yeah. compared to My mom and brother saw the original, 
and said that it was really good, you know, and that the second movie did it really good justice, you know. The Planet of the Apes movie, I watched all the original ones, and I love all the original ones, you know. Um, the remake took me a little bit to get into it, but once I, you know, ended up watching it, you know, kind of like, okay, I'm just going to give this a chance. You know, actually it's not a bad movie. The remake is a pretty good, decent, good movie. Okay. Um, I was not crazy about the movie because of it was trying to be deeper than, than it actually had the ability to go. Like, I think that at, they were reaching too high. I think they were going for things that I don't think the writers are just capable of doing. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of interesting ideas, and they do expand on certain things. But uh, besides that, I found the movie to be very disappointing. But well, you can't beat the original ending where you know he sees the sexual liberty. You just because it's that moment of you realize oh, you're shit, shit we're on Earth, Earth. Yeah. you know. You just can't beat that classic. Thing. Yeah, and the Tim Burton movie just raised even more questions. It's like, wait, I thought he was already on Earth with you know time altered worse apes took over. Then he he goes back you know through the, you know whatever he goes back to his what's supposed to be his world and it's like. They're still taking over. Uh, they kind of ruined the kind of ruined the twist. Oh, well, it's like I love the classic whole thing, you know, the loop in the original classic movies, you know, that with Caesar, you know, and you know being Cornelius's son and all that, you know, being raised by Ricardo Montalban. Um, this is something I will get into when we do a remakes episode. Mm -hmm. um, but I would have to say one thing though. The remake completely fucks over the the original opening. Like they really, really savor in the gorilla, the, mm -hmm. the apes that you know they don't show them immediately. You don't know what coming, and it's a legitimate it's a legitimate surprise. Now I can't expect the remake to get that because we're all familiar with it. It's called Planet of the Apes. We know that already. We know it going in. So, you know, they just kind of cut the bullshit and just you know, get to the story. The problem I had is the apes were nowhere near as advanced as they should have been. Like, one of my questions is, if they don't know how to make guns, how the hell do they take over? With sticks and rocks? I mean, hey, it's... Sticks and rocks hurt. I mean, it... You know, it's pretty ridiculous in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but at least it's more believable We you actually see it happen. This, this is just like, it makes no sense. How did they become superior? Another thing that bugged the piss out of me was, why can the humans talk? One of the things about the original movie is they took over because we were stupid. Like, and that's why it was such a shock. They yeah, it's like it was a role reversal. They took over to the point where we became like the apes and they were the humans. You know, that was what was amazing about it. In the remake, we can just talk. We can talk normally. It's like we're just... We're just... That's how it's staying in our cages. I did, like, that was my biggest contention with the new movie was the fact that humans could talk. And also... Like Okay, one, you can't top this guy. You cannot top Charleston Heston. He's one of the greatest actors of all time. Mm -hmm. He is probably one of the manliest actors there ever will be. You know, him and Sean Connery right there. But uh, but he's one of the greatest actors of all time. And we get Marky Mark. Uh, but anyway... We will go more in, in depth, depth on that when we do the full episode. On that when episode. we do, yeah, a remake episode. So, any final thoughts? Uh, science fiction, love it. Can't imagine the world without it. It's a great, great. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a great outlet for creativity. It's a great outlet for creativity. Um, I can't. Yeah, I can't imagine going without it. I'm not the biggest science fiction person. I'm not really a big fan of it, but I can't imagine going without it. 
I mean, it is, I think it's one of the strongest genres, just because, you know, it's unlimited, mass amount of creativity, and, you know, mixing it with science. Well, we went over time again. Well, we went over time again, but uh, this was really fun. Uh, I'm Philip. Aaron. And Don. And next week, it will be all about Godzilla.